so in the previous segment of this lecture i have explained you about that what is refraction of light i have explained you about the refractive index also as well as laws of refraction i hope you have liked that segment and i can bet you are going to like this one also in this particular segment of the lecture we will be talking in detail about the bending of the light rays as well as the refraction of the light through a rectangular glass slab first we will be starting up this segment with the bending of light rays in class 10th you have been taught that whenever the light rays goes from a rarer to the denser medium it bends towards the normal and if the light ray goes from the denser to the rarer medium it bends away from the normal but you have not been given the perfect explanation for this bending of light rays that i am just going to share with you now so for that i have taken up this boundary that is separating the two media medium 1 and medium 2 first of all we will be taking up the case when the light is traveling from the denser to the rarer medium so here medium 1 is denser and medium 2 is rarer let the refractive index of medium 1 be n1 and medium 2 be n2 this is a ray of light that is traveling from the denser to the rarer medium if i just apply the snell's law here at the boundary i can write n1 sin i is equal to n2 sin r now here n1 is greater than n2 because medium 1 is denser and we know the denser medium has greater refractive index so as n1 is greater than n2 so to hold the snell's law this is sin i should be less than sin r that is angle of incidence should be less than the angle of refraction now angle of refraction will be more than the angle of incidence only if the light will bend away from the normal when it goes to the rarer medium and this is the reason why when light goes from the denser to the rarer medium it bends away from the normal now let us suppose this medium 1 is rarer and medium 2 is denser and the light is going from the rarer to the denser medium again if i apply the snell's law here i can write n1 sin i is equal to n2 sin r now in this case medium 1 is rarer yes you are right here in this case n1 is less than n2 now as n1 is less than n2 so to hold snell's law sin i should be greater than sin r it means i should be greater than r that is angle of incidence should be more than the angle of refraction and angle of refraction will be less if the light will bend towards the normal and this is the reason why whenever the light ray goes from the rarer to the denser medium it bends towards the normal so i hope this bending of light ray is clear to you now here we will be talking about the refraction of light through a rectangular glass slab for that purpose i have taken up this rectangular glass slab abcd now this is a light ray that is striking the glass slab at the surface ab this is traveling from the air to the glass okay so air is a rarer medium glass is a denser medium and hence it is going to bend towards the normal so if you just draw the normal at the point of the incidence for this interface that is air glass interface you will see that the light ray will bend towards the normal on the other hand on this interface that is on this surface cd the light is going from the glass to the air so it is going from the denser to the rarer medium and hence if you just draw the normal this is going to bend away from the normal okay so i hope this is clear to you now this emerging ray that is emerging out of this rectangular glass slab is called the emergent ray and in this figure you can clearly see here that this emergent ray is parallel to the incident ray so whenever the refraction of light happens through a rectangular glass slab there is no deviation in the path of the light so the direction of the incident ray and emergent ray is same it means there is no deviation from the path but you can still see here this shift so you can see here that the emergent ray that is the incident ray just gets shifted perpendicular to itself so this perpendicular distance between the incident and the emergent ray is called the lateral displacement now you may get a question in the exam that prove that this emergent ray is parallel to the incident ray and you may also get a question in the exam to derive a relation to find out this lateral displacement or lateral shift now let's talk about that how you can do so so here if i just write down all the angles in this diagram you can see 
First of all, I will be applying the Snell's law to prove that the emergent ray will be parallel to the incident ray at the surface that is air glass interface. Okay. So for air glass interface, I can write down the refractive index of glass with respect to air as the ratio of the sine of angle of incidence to the sine of angle of refraction. I is the angle of incidence, R is the angle of refraction. Again, if I apply Snell's law at the glass air interface, what I am going to write down? The refractive index of glass with respect to air can be written as the ratio of the sine of angle of emergence to the sine of angle of incidence in that case that is R dash. Now here in this figure you can see both the normals are parallel to each other and hence angle R is equal to angle R dash. Now as angle R is equal to angle R dash, so I can write this expression as the refractive index of glass with respect to air as the ratio of the sine of angle of emergence to the sine of angle of refraction that we are getting from the surface 1 that is from the air glass interface. So if I just compare these two equations, I will be getting I is equal to the angle of emergence that is I dash. So as these two angles are equal, it means these light rays that is the incident ray and emergent ray are parallel to each other. So this is how beautifully you can explain this in your exams that the incident ray and emergent ray are parallel to each other. I hope that is clear to you. Now let's try to derive the relation for the calculation of this perpendicular distance that you can see here between the incident and the emergent ray which I have told you is called the lateral displacement. So what is the lateral displacement that is the perpendicular distance between the incident ray and the emergent ray. Okay, so this is lateral shift or the lateral displacement. Now here to calculate the lateral shift, I have represented it with this letter D. Okay, so here in this triangle ON1A, you can see this triangle ON1A. In this triangle, I can write down what is cos R. This is the right angle triangle that is right angled at N1. So I can write down cos R as ON1 that is base divided by hypotenuse that is OA. What is ON1 that is going to be the thickness of this glass slab which will be T that you can see in the figure is represented with T. So that will be T or OA we are writing it as OA. Okay. So cos R is T by OA. I can write from here this OA as T by cos R. Moving further to this triangle, which triangle I am talking about now? That is O N to A. In triangle O N to A, you can see this is again the perpendicular or the right angle triangle, which is right angled at N2. I can write down this sign N to OA. N to OA, you can see here is the angle that is I minus R in the figure. Okay. So I can write sin n to OA is equal to what is sin theta? Sin theta is the perpendicular upon hypotenuse. Now in this triangle, the perpendicular is a n2, which is d, and that should be divided by the hypotenuse, which is OA in this case. So I can write down this sin i minus r as a n2 divided by OA. Now what is OA? I have calculated the value of OA as t by cos r. So this will be t by cos r, and from this I can calculate this expression for the lateral displacement as t sin i minus r divided by cos r. Okay, so I hope this is clear to you. So this is the general expression to calculate this lateral displacement that is the lateral shift. Now let us have a look on to the special cases of this lateral displacement. So if I talk about the first case which is i is equal to 0, what is going to happen? If I is 0, that is the light ray is incident on the glass slab perpendicular to the surface. Okay, So in that case, R is going to be 0. Let me just mark that for you. So here in this adjoining figure, you can see if the light ray incident perpendicular onto the surface of the rectangular glass slab, the angle of refraction is going to be 0 and hence the shift will be 0. That is the ray will pass through the slab without deviation and shifting. So when I will be 0, R will be 0. Okay. Further, if the angles are very small, if I is small, R will also be small. So what we can write down as the refractive index of glass with respect to air as the ratio of sin I by sin R. Now as the angles are very small, so I can write sin theta as theta. So that will be I by R. 
from here i can write down this r as i by mu that is the refractive index okay so if i just replace this see here this sin i minus r will simply can be written as ti minus r because sin theta will be theta for small angles cos theta for small angles can be replaced with 1 so cos r is going to be 1 for small angles so this lateral shift for small angles of incidence and refraction will become ti minus r okay now from this i can bring out this i common and in the bracket i will be having see here this will simply can be written as t i can bring out i common this will be 1 minus r by i and this r by i can be written as 1 by mu okay so this can be written as t into i in the bracket 1 minus 1 by mu where mu is the refractive index of glass with respect to air i hope that is very clear to you so here in this particular segment of the lecture i have tried to explain you about the bending of the light rays we have seen the special cases of the refraction of light through the rectangular glass slab we have derived the formula that is the general formula to calculate the lateral displacement i hope all these topics are very clear to you i hope you have noted down these cases these are very important from the examination point of view now let's move on to the next segment of the lecture and discuss about the apparent depth <music>